It was a time of unparalleled crisis. Following the catastrophic Wall Street crash of October 28, 1929, the decade of the 1930s in America would forever after be known as the era of the Great Depression. Riding high in the 1920s, America was suddenly brought low, literally overnight. The grand excesses of the Jazz Age gave way to a national emphasis on thrift and recovery. Breadlines became a common sight nationwide, as millions who had once been on top of the world now struggled simply to make ends meet. In 1932, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected the 32nd President of the United States, an office he held until his death in 1945. In spite of, or perhaps because of, America's long national nightmare, movies were more popular than ever. Universal unleashed a legion of monsters on a public hungry for thrills, while Warner Brothers addressed social ills with a string of popular gangster films. Jesse Owens won at the 1936 Olympics, and Amelia Earhart was tragically lost over the Pacific. Superman and Batman debuted as a new breed of American hero, and Lou Gehrig, a real hero to millions of Americans, retired from baseball. And the era of the great airships came to an end with the fiery crash of the airship Hindenburg in Lakehurst, New Jersey, an event described in the first transcontinental radio broadcast. During this tumultuous era, Allied continued to offer radios and electrical parts and components, but now with a much greater emphasis on low prices due to the challenging economic times. Virtually none of the radio models offered in the 1929 catalog are repeated in the 1930 edition, possibly to allow for easier repricing of products. In 1930, Allied introduces the new night screen grid receivers, touted as a set that stands out over everything we have ever heard. It compares favorably with sets of much higher price. In that year, customers could choose from the Wynnum Knight, the Knight Hinsdale, the Kingsbury Knight, the Scoville Knight, and more than a dozen others. Always at the forefront of innovation, in 1930, Allied introduced portable radios and portable phonographs to their catalog offerings, followed by the home talky 16 millimeter synchronized sound home movie projector, in which a phonograph record played through the home radio set was hooked up to a movie projector to simulate the new technology of talking pictures. 1931 brought the debut of the first auto radio kit, designed for automobiles, motorboats, and airplanes, with portable public address systems on offer for the first time in 1933, which the catalog copy tells us are practical, workable, easily installed, and economical. Perhaps the most significant advance for Allied in the 1930s was the introduction of the popular night kit line, an inauspicious debut a transceiver was the only initial offering, the line grew steadily, adding shortwave in 1936, a crystal radio set in 1938, and a five-tube ham super kit in 1939. Night kits would prove enormously popular over the next several decades, inspiring generations of boys and girls to explore the exciting world of electronics. As the decade drew to a close, the national feeling of despair had been replaced with one of optimism, fueled by a sense of the unlimited possibilities the future held in store, and brought to life on the grounds of the 1939 New York World's Fair. Allied and America had weathered the storm of the Great Depression, but new threats loomed just over the horizon, threats that would have to be confronted in the coming decade.